Andy Redfern, you must be shocked as well. Well, very disappointed to hear all that's gone on, particularly with uh, Mr Flowers being at the epicentre of this kind of uh, nightmare that's going on for, for him, no doubt. But ultimately, uh, this is a, a big bank. Uh, it's a bank that's got a lot of customers. It's a bank that's got a lot of heritage. And I hope we're not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater here and actually forget about all it's built up over the years. Did you have um, a personal history with them? Well, it, uh, only in the sense of you know having having grown up in the uh, in, in Manchester, a uh, family worked for them. My uh, grandfather was the head actuary of the cooperative insurance. You know, it was part of our great our uncle blood. was the chief executive of the cooperative wholesale society. Don't hold back here. Uh, yeah, we we even went to the co-op dentist. That's how co-op we were through and through. Uh, so you know that that's an Im- important part of the heritage and history. And I think we should now remember that the the kind of ethics that the co-op bank have they're not just skin deep. They're not just at the uh, at the level of uh, appointing a few nice people to do the right job. They do uh, social accounting every year that looks through the but every aspect of what the bank does, how it can be more ethical, how it can actually push the boundaries and actually do better in all that it does. These things we shouldn't forget about. These are in a, these are light years ahead of the other banks. Can, so, can, a, uh, can an ethical bank have a, a chairman who messages male prostitutes on the work computer? I, I think an you ethical, might say yes. I don't know. I, I think an ethical bank should always be looking very hard at the staff that it employs and setting the right kind of moral compass for its staff and giving them the right kind of guidance. Uh, and ultimately, as we've seen in this case, that if, if things come to light which aren't appropriate for or, or uh, relevant for somebody's situation within the role they ha- they carry, then then they should leave. But and that, that's what's happened in this case. Are we not getting to the point, Andy, here, where we realise that the, the phrase ethical bank is a complete and utter contradiction? It's rather like saying an ethical grenade. I think you've, you you kind of if if that's what we're getting to, then we really have no hope, do we? Because ultimately, we all uh, have to use banks to exchange money and to do the things that we need to do. And so, what we need to do is look at a reform for how banking works and try and look at around the world for the, those examples of where banking actually uh, matters to people and actually allows people to achieve what they're trying to achieve. I think the, the the problem is that ultimately a bank should be a means to an end. It's a means of completing a transaction. It's a means of conducting out the business we need to conduct. Whereas we've seen banking become an end in itself. You know, the whole situation with hedge funds and the way in which they operate, they have become like a global casino, kind of like, you know, if you put enough money into them, hopefully you'll get a big win. But once well, the bank borrows, it's, it's on thin ice, isn't it? Because the borrowing can go wrong and then they've got to decide whether they borrow more to make up their losses. And pretty soon, and they all do it, so pretty soon they're not ethical, are they? But I think the interesting thing is, right the way up until the the, the merger with the Britannia Bank, uh, the, there really wasn't an issue for the court. The court was the, the organisation with the strongest balance sheet. And whatever hubris led to that merger uh, is, is probably the thing we should be most concerned about, because that's the, that's the key decision that actually allowed things to kind of go in the wrong direction. Ultimately, the core goals and values of the bank are still the same. And I think we should be very careful about uh, just throwing in uh, the towel now and all moving our account somewhere else. We should use that as our our collateral to actually say, you know, we want you to change, we want you to live by the values that you were founded on uh, and we should support things like the Save Our Bank campaign which are, are, are working to try and keep the co-op bank uh, um, to those values. But there is, in my view, it's not time yet to all basically walk away. Thank you very much. Two very different views. Andy Redfern is founder of TheEthicalSuperstore.com and as we heard, has a big history with the co- 